In this second video, I'm going to show you the Google document that's associated with the Unit 5, Day 12, Day 13 lesson on the atomic bomb. And I'm going to show you how to break it down, and I'm also going to give you some answers to some of the questions students will be asked. Uh, so this lesson, uh, this Google Doc corresponds directly with the slides, and there is uh, an outline here so you can follow which, which pages are about the first day of the lesson and which pages are about the second day of the lesson. It's also on the header for the, for the individual pages um, because it is 10, 10 pages long. So if you want to take stuff out or if you want to divide it up into day 12 and day 13 separately, you should definitely do that. I'm just going to close the outline here. And I have, when you when you use the link in, the, in this video and you uh, make a copy of this document, it will, it will have all the comments in, and the comments contain answers so and some notes. So if you uh, share it with students, make sure to share it without the comments because otherwise you will give them all the answers. It starts off with the focus question and the learning objective, and then they use, they use the map and chart to analyze uh, the results of fighting in the Pacific Theater. That's your hook and background. Some answers here, uh, which I go over also in the student-facing video. Mini lesson for this lesson is uh, the big answer is that there were a lot of deaths from the battles. Um, so when we're thinking about how much death the atomic bombs caused, it's also important to remember that it also prevent prevented some some more deaths happening in battles. There's also a deeper inference to make about the um, the fact that Japan had control over a lot of Allied territory, including the Philippines and, and many, many British islands in the Pacific Ocean, um, as well as China, which was all part of the Allied powers. So um, considering this, when the United States and the Allied powers were asking for an unconditional surrender, what that meant for Japan and its territories. The next thing is some background information. Uh, this is some key information here, and I bolded some of the more important terms. The Manhattan Project, you want to make sure that you're you're well versed in. The Potsdam Declaration is a little bit of a higher level vocabulary term, but it's basically that the Allied powers met and decided that they were going to demand an unconditional surrender from the Japanese um, leaders. And unconditional surrender is really a key idea in this whole debate around the atomic bomb. So definitely make sure that you're familiar with that uh, so that you can help your students understand what that means. Um, and then the next thing is jumping into the um, work as Truman's advisor. So for each of these possible choices, students would be reading the text, reading the short passage above the choice, and then outlining the advantages and disadvantages of that choice. So for invading Japan with American and British troops, meaning not using the atomic weapons, some potential advan advantages and disadvantages are listed here. Of course, these are not um, the only advantages and disadvantages, so there are other possible answers students might give. And your students are really making inferences here. Um, they can use the text, but it's also logic. Um, and there's answers here for each of the possible choices. So definitely check these out. And for the final one, which is what which is the the giving uh, bombing Japan without warning if they refuse to surrender. Um, this one has a, a higher level um, connection to the the fact that the U.S. also wanted to in, to intimidate the Soviets with this new weapon that the, that the U.S. had developed. So once the students have analyzed the possible choices of what the U.S. could have done in this situation, they are going to write their memo to President Truman, indicating the different courses of action he could take and explaining the advantages and disadvantages of each. For this one, students, they just examined four different potential uh, courses of action um, with advantages and, and disadvantages, so they can choose three. You can adjust this, though, to make uh, sense for your own class. For example, if you had removed one of the potential uh, choices, then maybe make them only, have them only uh, analyze th two choices. Um, but then also give, the students should be giving their recommendation of what the president should do. Should he demonstrate the, the weapon, use the weapon without warning, um, or avoid using the weapon and invade with, with uh, ground troops? You might also decide if you want them to cite their evidence here. Um, there's no wrap-up for this, so there's no question for this wrap-up, so students are just getting some more information here about what was done, which is that the United States did end up using the bombs twice, um, and they had 
they had done it with very little warning. Um, all right, day 13, or the second day of this lesson, students are now looking at primary source documents that are showing the aftermath of the bombings um, to figure out whether they would change their, their recommendation to President Truman. Um, there are four questions, one question for each document, and there are simple answers here. What was an immediate effect of the atomic bombing? Um, destruction of homes, injury, death. Uh, just looking at what happened at Hiroshima, um, you can students can have a variety of answers here, but there was radioactive um, rain, buildings were destroyed, uh, and two thirds of the, of the city was destroyed. People, people were murdered, people were killed. Um, what effect did the, did the atomic bomb have on the particular child here, uh, Akihiro Takahashi? Um, and there's a lot of variety of answers here, but but definitely making sure that he that students find recognize that he was badly burned and injured, um, that he was under med undergoing medical treatment for a year and a half. And on the last one, what were the long-term effects uh, in Nagasaki? Um, radiation poisoning is, is a long-term effect, and also the, uh, the resentment that the people of Nagasaki held for Americans after the end of the war, and also not mentioned in this, not mentioned in this comment, um, the just the uh, destruction and the need to rebuild the city. Um, okay, the final the final portion of the independent work is that they will be looking at how it, um, knowing about the aftermath of the bombings affected their their recommendation to President Truman from the previous lesson. There are two parts of the wrap up. First, they're looking at a passage from President Truman um, explaining that he does not disagree with his decision and he stands by it um, as an acceptable act of war. And so students are reflecting on that. And the second part of the wrap up is discussing or writing or discussing um, the role of race, racism in the bopping, dropping of the bombs and um, and the, the fact of the U.S.'s need to be militarily superior to the Soviet Union. And then the final uh, part of the lesson is a check for understanding, which is really going to transition students into the thinking about the Cold War and how the bombs had a huge effect on um, relationships and, and power in the world. And that's the lesson. So again, just make a copy of this um, or click the link and it will automatically make you a copy with all of these comments and answers. And when you share it with students, just remove all the comments or if you Going to share it through Google Classroom, it will automatically remove all the comments for you. Thank you.